Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Grow Together Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Sirazza, and today we have uh, two amazing guests, uh, Mr. Ban, and another one is... Max. Max. Oh. Uh, and the, in this session, we are going to discuss some interesting part. Everyone wants to get a rich, and uh, for that, for this, uh, to get a rich, they do or find some different ways. So I invite uh, one person uh, who is ex- who has expertise in this domain. Uh, hello, Ben, and hello, Mac. How are you? Good, thank Very you. Very good, thanks. Thanks for having us. First of all, thank you so much for having uh, accepting invitation. Uh, during this, these days when you already have a very busy schedule, I really appreciate your time. No problem at all. So before uh, to start any discussion, uh, today what whatever we are doing, but somehow I do believe that something happened in your past, which makes you today uh, whatever you are doing. So how your journey starts, your education journey, if you look, just discuss one by one. You go first. <laughs> Our education journey? Yeah. Um, so th- th- this is actually, this is an interesting story because when Ben and I first actually met in this, uh, t- to start getting squirreled together, we spoke about our individual journeys. Now, when I was young, I'm not saying financial literacy or money was a big conversation at our home, but dad did make, a, my dad did make a point of making sure that I did understand the value of money. Now, he didn't lecture me at all, but he did give me little things along the way. He encouraged me to do certain things. So one of those was um, uh, every year in my small country town, we had a fair um, uh, that would go to and I would do small jobs to earn a little bit of money so I could go to this fair. One time, I think I had around $60 saved up, ready to go. Most years when I went... I'd spend a lot of that money on show bags, which was just full of absolute rubbish. Um, And my dad said to me just before I was heading off to the show, he said, whatever money you bring back, I'll double it. Now, that was my first introduction to intentional spending. Uh, I didn't know it at the time. I had no idea what that actually meant. But when I went to the show and I was walking around, I really started to think about What am I going to spend my money on? Do I actually really need this? I ended up going back with uh, 50% of the money I started with. So in the end, dad doubled that and I was able to uh, uh, basically had a free day at the show, which was fantastic. Now, a whole, along my um, journey, my financial literacy journey, dad was always there involved saying, you know, you should give this a go. You should put a little bit of money aside. You should do this and that. I know now um, after being on this squirrel journey that my um, growing up, my financial literacy journey was completely different to um, other people. Um, But I also understood how important this is. And I'm trying to do this yeah, similar things that my dad did with me. I'm trying to do similar things with my two daughters now. Great. And how's your dad? Uh, I I had a completely different experience. I think rule number one in our in our household was uh, we don't we don't talk about money. Um, that was just flat out like any time that I asked, oh, how much was this, or what can we afford this, or why are we not going on holiday? Like how much do you earn? Like it was just money was completely off the table when it came when it came to our household um so uh times obviously evolved and and had different sort of um sort of experiences at university got myself in, in a fair bit of debt and I, I i sort of count my count my sort of lucky stars in the sense that i fell into the personal finance profession i didn't necessarily choose i didn't wake up wanting to be a like a, a, a wealth manager or financial planner um but basically that's allowed me to 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 basically uh, gain one of life's most important skills. I mean, money is something that, that affects every single person's uh, life. And I f- find myself sort of, like I said, like or count myself lucky because I'm not sure with without that sort of falling into that career where I would have learned those those skills. Um, and I think that's why both of myself and Matt are so passionate about what we're doing is that we know that there's a huge problem. The world, the world is... Um, is is financially illiterate or the majority of the world is financially illiterate and 
we want to go back to sort of grassroots level and, and make sure that the the what we do and what we can to to try and break that that cycle and sort of create generational change. Um, hopefully we've got a nice sort of set of skills in terms of trying to build a financial literacy and tech product. I come from a financial planning wealth management background. Matt's got a large, large uh, experience in as a teacher and across the world. So um hopefully um really? through our platform we can we can have some real impact so uh, what i have been observed in my own journey uh we know about saving we used to save uh we used to receive pocket money on eid we received ed and such on birthday we someone we get some cash so we have some idea how to save amount but uh being a financial dictate how much is it important to the next step is to invest or to make it double yeah i mean a hundred percent i mean i think i think that i i wouldn't overplay i wouldn't overplay how uh how easy it is to save i think i think there's enough statistics out there that says as a whole as a population we're not saving enough or preparing enough for for retirement but again mm. the next step of that okay well, what once you do start saving what do you do with it because as we all know inflation is in, increase increases and and the cost of services yeah. that we, we buy every single year is getting more expensive so essentially if you just are saving money and you're not making uh make or you, that that doesn't keep pace with inflation essentially you're losing money so yeah. um it is important but i i i would suggest that the majority of people out there would feel uncomfortable or unsure as to what to do with their money um and again that's something that we want to make sure that we tackle within our platform Absolutely. It, it's about building. Uh, I think Ben's right. Saving is a is a big thing. And yes, it's mm. it, it can be easy for some people. Um, and and I'll give you an example of that. I've got two daughters, one 14, one 12. The 14 year old can't save. And and we talk to her about this. This is this is a part of the the dinner table conversation, talking about, you know, if you want this thing. Um, mm. then you have to start saving. But she is very much in the moment and walking past a shop, she'll go in and buy something for herself, them. something for her friends. But I've got another daughter, 12-year-old, that um, wanted to buy a scooter and she saved for a year and a half to do that. Um, so the, the whole idea, this, this behaviours journey does take time and we need to create those positive habits over a long period of time, savings might be saving money might be easy for some people, but it certainly isn't easy for others. Um, and but and it helps that's you when you are able to multiply it. If you're just saving it again, uh, as uh, Ben mentioned, that you're losing a money. Uh, maybe it, ha you, it has a today it has a worth of uh, you are able to buy a let's suppose iPhone, but maybe after one year you cannot buy the same thing with the same amount. So uh, you need to learn how to be. Uh, multiply or, uh, uh, or invest somewhere where you can get the maximum benefit from it. Uh, the next part yeah. in a business, in an organization uh, is to find a partner and uh, co-founder. How do you, did you meet each other? Hey, that, that, that's a good story. So um, I, uh, my first international teaching job, uh, I went to the UK, but after that, I came to the UAE and I actually set up a manual banking program in my class with another colleague. Um, and I, I won't go through the whole story, but it was extremely beneficial um, for the students, not, not just in terms of understanding basic financial literacy habits, but also their engagement in class because we used it as a reward system. So um, from that, uh, and it was a few years later that I started thinking about after talking to many parents and the, the research, and this was just verbal research, talking to parents, talking to other people about financial literacy and whether they would like their kids to have that skill or learn that skill within schools. It started to dawn on me that this was something that was lacking. It's a life skill that he's lacking. It, and there's there's so many life skills that are, are, are lacking mm -hmm. in school. At the moment. But financial literacy is a big one. So started planning that out, started thinking about how can we introduce this into schools without encroaching on the curriculum, without adding more workload to, to teachers. Um, had the idea, had it up and running. And then one, a mutual friend of ours, um, Ben was a, 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 
a celebrity in the area, in a sense, both in the sporting arena, but also in his journey to try and teach young people about financial literacy. Um, and one of our mutual friends saw that and said, you two need to hook up. Um, and it, it was actually a great meeting. We, we, it just so happened that we lived in the same building. Uh, we met down at a coffee shop and I don't know how many hours it was, but we sat there and we just spoke for quite a few hours about financial literacy and about how important it is to start this journey at a young age. Um, and it, it just grew from there. And, you know, we both understood or we both saw the passion for something like this in each other and knew that this was going to be a good fit and we need to actually start moving forward on this and uh, and doing something with it. Uh, in that, uh, one more point I want to understand. Why you choose Dubai uh, uh, from a different area and then you came to this area? We we were we were actually Abu Dhabi, um, but ah. yeah, UAE. Um, well, I mean, like, I think I think it was set of circumstances. Um, in terms of we are both expats in in UAE for for years. I mean, like you what at least a decade for you, wasn't it? Yeah, and twelve I, years altogether. Uh, I'm, ah, I'm, on, I'm on I'm on twelve twelve years now, right? So. Um, we both had sort of real milestones. I've had both of my children here, and and so, so the UAE is very much home as well. Um, obviously, I'm both from London, Sydney, but the UAE still feels very, very much home and a huge part of our of, of our lives now. That being said, in its own right, it's a great place to 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 to, to build a business. Um, the country is very ambitious, um, very supportive. Supportive, yeah. I mean, the the access to 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 the, to the government and and different um, the network that you can build and 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 people who are, are really willing to, to 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 help you progress and 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 build your startup is it's it's a it's a fantastic ecosystem in its own right. So whilst whilst the the circumstances um whilst the circumstances were aligned that we we were living there anyway uh, from a business perspective it still made lots of sense for us to, to headquarter our business out of out of Abu Dhabi a lot more sense I, I've actually said this a number of times to friends um when they ask me why didn't you start this in your home country mm -hmm. I just don't think I would have had that support and that network in my home country to do something like this um the the UAE um is extremely supportive yeah. of looking after their next generation and really making sure that the, um, the, the, the youth of today are supported and they understand important life skills like financial literacy. I saw one more thing, uh, being a commerce student, uh, I do realize that your science is a difficult subject. That's why I opt for the commerce. Uh, again, we have a number of uh, subjects and when you're choosing the one, obviously you are good in that and you're not fit for the others. But as you mentioned that the financial literacy, the life skill, everyone needs to be learned. So uh, when you're introducing this program to the kids and you are trying to educate them, how was the reaction of the kids? Well, I, I think that's what's so, I think that's what's so um, exciting about what we're doing is that there's enough academic research out there that shows that children are desperate to learn this sort of stuff right like it's this this isn't we, we're not we're never there's never friction when we go into classrooms or anything children are desperate to learn this because they know that this is going to apply to their to their real life they, they spend a lot of time in schools mm -hmm. learning stuff where they, they think well maybe i'll never have to use this again right whereas nah. when they when we implement our platform they're talking and discussing stuff that is really going to have a tangible benefit on their life um and 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 to, to the schools to the i mean we've got an like we've 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 had quite a lot of traction and and we've got a number of amazing schools that, and we've never come across a a school uh, that has ever said this isn't important for any of our children or we're already doing too much of it every school knows they need to 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 do more of it and their children are, are desperate to learn it so i guess that that's what makes what we're doing Absolutely. really exciting i don't think we can underestimate um, what children uh, recognise and understand. And what I mean by that is they, you can be sitting in a class and they'll ask their teacher, why, do we, why are we learning this? When are we ever going to learn this in life? 
this is not the question they yeah. ask when you start yes. to talk about money because they every single day whether it's being spoken at home like ben was saying you know we don't talk about money at home or on my case you need to learn to save money i'll incentivize you whatever it is these kids understand whether it's been spoken at home or spoken at school they understand the value of money because it comes into their life all the time it's it's that new pair of shoes that they want it's that new phone that they want so it's something that they are interested in. They, they know it's going to be something that's a part of their life for the rest of their life. So I think it's, it's crucially important that we harness that um, engagement at a young age and we actually roll with it. Again, in this role of the school and role of parents are very important because what I have been observed in last five to 10 years, school criticized by many people that they're not teaching a life skills. And on the other hand, the parents who are uh, paying the huge fees to the schools and after 12th or 14th years of education, uh, their kids are unable to make the money. The point is that not just to make a money, obviously you have to uh, live in this world. You need some uh, uh, source of income to survive. So uh, previously it has been discouraged. We have not observed that people are discussing these things. But right now, it's am uh, very glad to know that schools are also accepting this and on the other hand parents are also concerned about it how can they educate their kids uh the different age groups all these things you know te technology has uh played a big part in this but what you've got to understand is that the role of a, a teacher was to deliver those core subjects mm -hmm. um that we found important now education is changing dramatically um, technology is changing dramatically. So technology is allowing us to actually implement life skills such as financial literacy in a way that it's not upsetting the, the natural balance of education at the moment. Now, there is going to be, I, I believe there is going to be a big shift in education, either how it's delivered or what it's being taught in the school. Um, even though financial literacy should have been uh, implemented 20, 30, 40 years ago, it doesn't matter. We're mm -hmm. there now. And what we've got to do is we've got to find those ways like, like we have with Squirrel to um, make an impact on a child's education without actually impacting on a school system. And that's what we're trying to do at the moment. So as I said, technology has a huge part of that. It's allowed us to um, asynchronously uh, teach these students about financial literacy without putting that pressure on teachers for uh, who themselves, if they had to teach financial literacy, would bring uh, workload and stress because um, we're asking teachers to teach something that they're probably not uh, comfortable with. So I, th I think that shift, that change has made teaching financial literacy uh, a lot or teaching any uh, life skill a lot easier in the last 10, 15 years. One more question here. Uh, when we are trying to work on the next generation or on the future leaders, how much is it important to entertain the current workforce? Uh, as you mentioned that the teachers who are teaching different subjects in the schools, obviously I uh, they also need to learn these things. Unfortunately, they have not learned at, that, at their school life. So uh, how can we entertain them or how can we facilitate them? Okay, they uh, not just financially trade, they, they become more financially stable. Well, I, I think I think it's it hundred percent. I think financial literacy across the board is is is, is needed. Um, people in the workplace, people who have retired, um, and obviously, obviously, uh, the, the next generation. Now, I think that we've targeted our efforts in going back to that grassroots because hmm. it's a cycle, right? And wow. if you it, rather than trying to treat the symptoms, right, that you you go back and fix the real problem. So we've made that decision. Now, that being said, there is academic research that talks about how. For, for example, children who learn financial literacy in schools, there's something called the the, the reverse spillover effect, which which mm -hmm. means that the children who learn financial literacy in schools, 
their parents then go on to demonstrate higher levels of financial literacy habits and behaviors because that education is coming back into that into the household and the discussion becomes more prevalent um and then parents decide or or feel more inclined to act as good role, role models for the children so it's not like a it's not necessarily um it's one or the other i think by doing work within the community with the next generation there is that spillover effect there is that sort of carry of benefit into the into the homes and hopefully it's a fairly efficient and low cost way to upskill more of the community rather than just the children in schools across the board i have seen that every school organized bake sale activity uh universities and colleges as well how was the experience uh because i do remember when i was in school uh big selectivity organized by the teachers but now what i have been witnessed that in the recent years the school give this space to the students they are going to put their stalls and making these at the school and the school providing yeah. them the audience uh or the buyers yeah like can, so this was something that happened in my manual uh banking program back in the day. So we gave them the opportunity to set up a business. So they would buy uh, a business license. And then once a week, they could actually put that, um, uh, sell their products. Now, some kids sold cupcakes, some kids oh, sold uh, friendship bracelets, uh, certain things that they did at home. Made at home. Um, th this was a huge part of it. And that is also a part of what we're trying to do as well. Um, make sure... Our whole platform is about simulating what adults do. Um, so we've got to bring in all these ideas of entrepreneurship, of, um, you know, understanding how business works, understanding what you need to do to actually start a business. I mean, that just to add on to that, the flip side of that, and maybe so slightly a little bit more negative, is that Sometimes I think there's a confusion between entrepreneurship and financial literacy. And sometimes like we go into schools and, and yeah. schools, oh yeah, we do financial literacy. Uh, we do, we get the children a business plan and we do a dragon's den. Yeah. And I'm sort of sitting there sort of sitting there and right when well, there's lots of elements of financial literacy that might need to go towards put, putting a business uh, plan together, which I completely understand, but financial literacy is the consistent have practice of, 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 uh, of those sort of financial decision making and transactions and that are going to build those habits and behaviors so that when the children go out into the real world with their own personal money they're able to to, to transact and and act responsibly responsibly so whilst it we we go to a number of different schools and they are they're, they're great like them and we children get so enthused by all right well, we're going to we're going to start a business and we're going to do a term where we build up to building a business but that can't be it right that can't that we need to we need to be be teaching uh children the whole sp sort of spectrum of personal finance uh and allowing them to consistently practice that through their academic lives great but again you are absolutely right uh even you're doing a job i uh, but financial literacy helps you in that it does not mean that every one person in this world has to start a business or become an entrepreneur so obviously uh, this is very important uh, misconception which we need to be clear again. Yes. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I think there's lots of there's lots of benefits to building a business, mm -hmm. and 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 uh, I think it will suit it suits certain people, and it doesn't yeah. maybe suit, suit other people, right? So mm -hmm. people will find their own paths in life. There's no right or wrong answer. Well, you you've got to understand every as you know every child's an individual now. The majority of those children aren't going to grow up and uh, start a business, but I guarantee one hundred percent of those kids are going to grow up and have to have a savings plan, a budget in place. Um, they're going to have to deal with emergencies. These are all the things that we're trying to develop in these in these students. It's it's all well and good to, as Ben was saying, to say, oh, well, we'll teach entrepreneurship or um, we'll we'll teach you about business, but um, uh, look, I don't know what the percentage would be, but we've, we've got to understand kids all over the world will actually be the ones working for businesses or working in the service industry. But every single one of those students are going to earn a salary and they're going to have to pay bills and they're going to have to budget their money, watch their money, Put money, put money aside for savings, put money aside for emergencies. And I think that's the most important thing that we're trying to teach here. And we're trying to um, get these kids into those habits, not necessarily 
everything else that goes along with it. It's just about recognising that you will have money coming in and that's the money that you have and you need to uh, work with that money that's coming in. Thank you so much, Daniel Mac. I really enjoyed the conversation for your time. Uh, and last, what advice you want to give to the students? Um, I, I always like to, I mean, in terms of students, I always like to to to, to say that uh, I think there's always a perception that that sort of personal finance, building wealth is, is a privilege mm. for certain people. Um, and I'm very big on wanting to make sure that every child that comes through our platform understands that they have a right to build wealth. They they have the access and then, and they can go and get the knowledge to put themselves in into a good position by building those habits and behaviors. Um, it's not exclusive. Uh, we live in we live in a world of yes. uh, where where we've got access to data and information. Right. Yeah. So um, Please, uh, for students, t take take financial literacy seriously because it, it it really does have a huge effect on your life. Yeah, we've we've actually said we we've got a solution to a problem our students don't know they've got yet, yeah. and I think that's extremely um, important to understand. We can go into schools, we can talk to these kids about money, and they might be they will be engaged because they know money is a part of their life. But what they don't understand is once they get into that real world, once they, they're in their 20s and they start earning money, that's when this knowledge is really going to kick in. That's when they're going to understand the benefits of what they've learned at an earlier age. Exactly. Uh, thank you so much again. I really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, I hope so that uh, this episode will help you to understand the concept of financial literacy. And the most interesting part, to, you are able to differentiate between the entrepreneurship and a financially great person. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Have a nice day and take care.